Well, the Browns are on the horizon and the injury reports are out. The last injury reports of the week came out. and We're going to run through these ones quickly, starting with the Browns. Joel Batonio was a full participant in practice on Friday. He's ready to go. Harrison Bryan is questionable with a hip injury. Amari Cooper, good to go. He was only on the injury report due to rest. Kareem Hunt is questionable with a thigh injury. And he was limited both Thursday and Friday. So somebody like him, he knows the system. He's been there before. Good chance he's probably going to be good to go. Doesn't need to practice fully to be able to play. Then you look at cornerback Greg Newsom, hamstring injury. He's also questionable, limited in practice on Thursday and Friday. And I got to tell you, if he was out, that would definitely be helpful for the Colts on offense. But again, he's one of those guys might not have to practice a whole lot to be able to play, but he is a corner and it is a hamstring. He's going to be running all game. We'll see about that one. Linebacker Taki Taki has a hamstring injury. He's out. Anthony Walker was able to clear concussion protocol. So the former Colt will be playing in this game. And then last but not least, Deshaun Watson with his right shoulder did not practice Wednesday, was a limited participant on Thursday, full participant on Friday. He's questionable, but it seems like he's probably going to be playing in this game. So all in all, they have four guys that are questionable. Pretty much all these guys look like they probably could end up playing anyways. And they have one guy that's out, the linebacker, Taki Taki. Then you look over at the Colts, Troy Brown, good to go. DeForest Buckner and Ryan Kelly both had rest days on Friday. They're good to go. Kylan Granson still in the concussion protocol. He's been ruled out. Braden Smith did not practice at all this week. That hip injury does seem to be a problem right now, and he is out this week. Alec Pierce is questionable, but he was a full participant on Friday, so it looks like he's actually going to be good to go. So all in all, fairly clean injury reports for both of these teams. And coming into this one, we already know what the story is. It's the Browns defense against Gardner Minshew coming off the worst game of his career against Jacksonville. And how is that going to go? With as great as that defense has been for the Browns, like historically great, just what kind of performance are we going to see from Gardner Minshew this upcoming week? Right, And if you look at the Browns, they run a 4-3 defense. What the Jags do last week, they stayed in base defense, the base 4-3 defense all day so the Colts couldn't run the ball. If the Browns come in and do the exact same thing, and then we have to throw 50 times with Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, and Dalvin Tomlinson on the defensive line coming after the quarterback, it's going to be a really long day for the offensive line. It's going to be really tough to win a game having that be the strategy, especially be the strategy with Gardner Minshew. He needs the run game to be able to complement what he does so that he can use the play action and we can get some people open down the field. So coming in, that's the main focus, right? This defensive line specifically against our offensive line. And our offensive line's been really good, right? It hurts not having Braden Smith there, obviously. So Blake Freeland, he's about to see a lot of Miles Garrett and – I mean, that that might not go as we would want it to, right? I mean, there was a clip going out around on Twitter where Miles Garrett tossed Trent Williams to the side, okay? That's Trent Williams, who usually does the tossing of people. Miles Garrett tossed him aside like it was nothing. He's a freak of nature. He's going to be a problem. We're going to have to run away from him all day long, and we're going to need some big-time chips coming from the tight ends. Right, coming off the line of scrimmage, as soon as he makes contact with the tackle, boom, hit him right in the ribs, get him off balance, try. We have to affect Miles Garrett instead of letting him affect us on the offensive side of the ball. Okay, because honestly, I feel pretty good for the most part about Zadarius Smith versus Bernard Raymond. I think Raymond's been really good this year. You know, he hasn't been perfect. He's left some guys around the edge a couple times. But for the most part, second-year guy, he's done really well. There's definitely been improvement week to week. So I expect him to do okay against Darius Smith. But then you're looking at the interior of the offensive line where Ryan Kelly, I'm pretty sure I saw that he was graded as the best center in the league right now. And then you have Quentin Nelson, who hasn't let up a sack this year. And then Will Fries, who for the most part has been good this year. You know, last game graded out not very good on either pass blocking or run blocking. But for the most part, Will Fries has actually been pretty solid this season. So the big focus, again, it's going to be Miles Garrett against Blake Freeland. We have to make sure Miles Garrett doesn't wreck the game. 
right? And then you go past that. We need to see the offense be able to be multidimensional. No matter what the defense is trying to do, we have to find a way to be multidimensional. We have to find a way to get the ball downfield while also continuing to get first downs until we're able to get the ball downfield. Like, that can't continue to be a problem. Our third down efficiency just isn't, it hasn't been where it needed to be all year long. Right, and that's going to be one of the keys in this game is going to be those third downs. Who's able to sustain drives? I think this is going to be a game where you see both defense dominating the other offense. I think this is going to be, you know, whoever gets the most field goals in this one's going to win. So Matt Gay could come up huge in this game like he did the Ravens game. But it's also going to be which offense can put up one or two touchdowns. Because at the end of the day, again, I think this is going to be a defensive battle. So I don't think it's going to take a whole lot in the touchdown department. So for me, just like any other week, the key to this game is going to be turnovers. Because if one of these defenses can put seven points on the board, that team's probably winning the game. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that happened in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if both defenses put a touchdown on the board in this game. But I do think that, you know, recency bias is a real thing. Everybody sees what Gardner did in his last game. And that every it, it takes people away from trying to believe in Gardner, right? And I, I completely understand that. But you also have to understand that was the worst game of his career, right? So he might come up, he might turn the ball over in this next game, but I don't expect this one to be as bad as the last one, right? And if he does go on to have the worst game of his career right after having the worst game of his career, then we, we got to start talking about other options at that point, right? If you want to win or they keep him at quarterback and we just continue to lose. But if there's one thing I know, like I, if we talked about the trenches show yesterday with Zaire Franklin, EJ Speed, Jonathan Taylor. The players want to win. So whatever they have to do to get that done, that's what they're trying to do. So as much as there are people that will say, oh, we should just try to lose the rest of the way so that we can go get Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes, that would be great and that makes sense, but nobody in the organization is ever going to do that. So when you're looking at it this week, I honestly think that this one could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if the Colts lost. Wouldn't be surprised if the Colts won. Okay, because again, that Browns defense is so good. You look at the numbers, like they are so good. But I think after a tough loss of basically getting dominated and watching the film from what happened last week, I think we're going to come into this game prepared. I'm gonna, I think we're going to come into this game with a plan just in case Cleveland does decide to stay in their base defense. We'll have a way to figure out something to do to counteract what they're trying to do. I think we'll learn from last week. We'll come into this one better. And I think – what we saw last week from Shaq Leonard and him playing more snaps, him being more involved in the game, right? We see him, I think, as we see him get more involved in the game and really start to get the reps and be able to get in the feel of the game, that's when we're going to see Shaq be Shaq. And I think Shaq's going to come up with a turnover in this game that's going to be a game changer. We're going to get a glimpse of the maniac, right? The Shaq that we know and love. He's going to come back this week, be a major factor in us being able to win this game. And like I said, it's only going to take one or two touchdowns. So in the end, I have the Colts winning this game 19 to 9. I think the Colts score one touchdown in this game. I think both teams kick a bunch of field goals. I think, again, this is going to be a defensive battle. Both these teams not going to be able to get into the end zone much in this game. So. Go ahead, give me the Colts to win this game. Again, that is 19 to 9. Now, I would love to know what your prediction for this game is. You let me know down in the comment section. And if you're somebody that comes by the live streams on Sunday to, to hang out during the game, then I just want you to know we're not going to be uh, live streaming, at least for the foreseeable future. The reason for that being is that there have been a couple times where uh, I live stream this year and, you know, it just seems that because of the NFL's partnership with YouTube now that they are almost in a way, you know, kind of shadow banning the channel. You know, it's not like I'm actually playing the game, but it's I'm live streaming, you know, a different alternate stream for the game 
while they are doing, you know, all their games for the NFL on Sundays. So, you know, it's just, it's caused some problems a couple different times this year. And with this channel still being so young and there's still being so much growth to be had, I don't want to stunt the growth of it. So for now, I'm going to shut down the live streams on Sunday. Um, hopefully at some point, you know, something will change and we'll be able to do that. Um, but I do at some point I'm going to do live streams through the week, though, you know, different ones on different nights throughout the week just to, you know, get with some of you and and we can get in the comment, you know, have you guys in the comments and we can just kind of chop it up. You know what I mean? You guys asking questions. I'll have a couple topics. So, again, at some point. We will be live streaming, but live streaming during the game um, is going to be put on hold for the foreseeable future. All right. So with that said, whether you're new or returning, if you enjoy the content, please hit that like button, hit that sub button. Make sure you keep notifications on so you get notified of any Colts news that comes out. I get to you as soon as I possibly can or any videos like this, you know, just general Colts talk. I appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by to hang out. And with that. As always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.